Hey folks, it's pick and place update time. So, although I got some tiny picos out very early when I got the pick and place machine, it's taken me a very long time to keep tweaking it to be able to get better placement for the 0402 and SOT 883 parts. It's been kicking my ass, to be quite honest with you, and it's been pretty unreliable and just when I think I've got the calibration right and I run a board and it's great and then I do a second board and it's out again. Uh, I've had a, a lot of problems with getting some of the settings to stick. Uh, I've got some new software from CharmHive, which has been great. They've been pretty proactive in pushing some updates out to fix some of the settings issues and a lot of help from the desktop pick and place mailing list, which has been good. But um, yeah, it's just taken me a really long time to get a pretty solid, reliable board out. And I think I've done it. I think I've cracked it. So I'm going to run a board now and get you to see the process and hopefully at the end of it, when we look under the microscope, the parts will be positioned pretty well. Let's find out. Okay, I've got a panel in, and sorry about how dark it is. I generally step through the first board, just to make sure everything's working fine. Sometimes it'll miss pick up like it's done now. It actually hasn't found anything. It's going to go back and try to grab it again. And that's because of the offset on the 0402 parts. That time it grabbed it. Generally only needs this double pickup like that on the first board of every run. If the tape was uneven because of a an uneven pull from the previous one, that's all. I get to watch it make sure that it actually does pick it up and refix itself. It's the advantage of using machine vision, it can detect that it didn't pick up the MOSFET just then. Time it did. Okay, that's the first board done. Everything's on there. Everything looks good. Let's go for it. It's going to be running at 75% now, faster than you would have seen it run before. Um, not brave enough to make it run any faster, but you'll see, it's pretty good. Here we go.
Okay, that's all the smalls done. Now we need to switch over the heads, the nozzles. And now we're going to do the bigs, what I call the bigs, the smalls and bigs. Once again, I'm going to step through the first board. There's only three parts though. That looks pretty good. Let's run it. And that is the panel done. Let's go look at it under the microscope, see what we need to fix, and then put the USB and antennas on and put in the oven. Okay, here's the board after the going through the picking place. Sorry about the quality of the footage that I'm recording. It's through my microscope camera, which is pretty bad. Um, I'll try to keep it in view. I'm actually looking through my microscope. So you can see that placement is, well, hit and miss still, but trust me, it is better than what it was by a long shot. I don't have to get every part perfect, but because they're 0402, they don't fix themselves as easily as some of the other parts do. Now the most important parts are the matching network over here because if I don't get these right I have to take the antenna off to get to them to fix them which is a lot of work. Now the more accurate I get them the less, the less time I need to spend reworking them after they've been reflowed. So obviously I want them to be as good as I can at this point. But uh, nudging them around is a bit of a pain. Because they're so light. As you can see some parts need fixing on a particular board and some parts don't. The Pico D4 looks pretty good on most boards and then all of a sudden you'll see it totally out on some other boards. But it's still inconsistent but it's vastly better than what it was. The amount of time I'm spending fixing each panel now is about a quarter of the time that I was before. So look at the um, CB2904, not even close. When it's that far out, I don't want to nudge it. I want to pick it up. Same with the Pico. So if I nudge it, I just smear the paste. I'll get bridges underneath the QFNs. So it's still frustrating, but it's less frustrating. Definitely faster than doing them oh, by hand, so I can't really complain. Oh, look at that, the 3.3K is standing upright. I wonder if we'll see any 90 degree placements today. Sometimes it's easier just to pick them up and put them back on again. I don't think I've had a board yet that I haven't had to tweak something on, but as you can see, some of them need very little work. So it's definitely an improvement. Can I get it any better? Well, I don't know. It's it's the randomness now that's making it pretty much impossible to to improve the fact that one part is perfect on one board and then not on the next. I don't know how to solve that. Okay, it seems to be a bit too much paste on this board maybe. I've been a bit heavy handed on the squeegee or spatula, whatever it's called. It'll reflow fine, don't worry. It'll be totally fine. 
Okay, I'm going to get the USB and antennas on, get in the oven, pull it out, and we'll have a look at how it turned out. Back soon. Okay, we're out of the oven, and um, let's have a look at the boards. So I can see that there's a bridge here between two pins on the CP2904, which I'll obviously fix, but it's not a problem because those two pins aren't connected to anything. Um, okay, cool. Let's do a quick scan. So we can see that the LED here is shifted, so it's just going to be reworked, nice and easy. Okay, cap over here. So things just shift around. The 0402 parts are not heavy enough to have much influence with the surface tension. There's another one just there. Probably should have spent a bit more time looking at those caps. It's okay. Okay, I can see here that the, the MOSFET okay, it's just shifted to the left a little bit. So I need to fix that. Cool. Got a couple of little blobs over here. Another short. So I'll just clean that up. It's what happens when you move the QFNs around without picking them up. It just bulks up some paste and you get issues like that. But they're again very easy to fix. You know, see up here there's just a resistor that is not sitting correctly on the pads. Okay. There's a lot around that CP2004. There's obviously a little bit too much paste on that board. Cool. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Some very minor rework involved. And there you go. So that is my process now for building panels. It's way faster than doing them by hand, obviously, but it's still a fair bit of work. Uh, a little bit painful. <laughs> and I've only got, you know, 800, no, about 600 boards to go still. So quite a few to make actually, yeah, 650 or so. I don't know how many I've made now, I think 350 I've made. But the campaign's not even finished yet. Anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the look from start to finish on building a panel. The pick and place machine has definitely sped me up quite a bit and the continued tweaking of it has made the rework part less, which makes me happier. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have subscribed, click the alarm bell to be notified when new videos come out. To my patrons, you're fantastic as usual. Don't forget, I'm gonna make a cast on Sunday night or my Monday morning, six o'clock in the morning. It's on David Watts' channel. I'll put a link in the description below. There'll be David Watts, myself, Liz Clark, Bit Looney, and Brian Locke. And we'll be talking about everything we've been working on over the last month. And obviously the only thing I've been working on is Tiny Pico. But oh well. Um, they've got some other interesting things to talk about. Anyway, so make sure you tune in to Makercast. And until next time, catch you later. Bye.